Alors concrètement, à quoi correspond cette compétence systémique What is systemic si competence Si nous prenons le left hand side graph, We see the various greenhouse effect gases and the positive and negative effect. Now, every time we try to simplify this by suppressing a gas or suppressing an effect, we run into a problem because we have to go back. We render unstable and complicated something that would have been simple if we had taken it in its whole complexity as a whole. The second picture that White Bear on his uh, piece of iceberg uh, with the uh, factories in the background. Here we feel emotion, aesthetics, but we don't think about the causes. We don't investigate. It is a form of reduction which uh, is also uh, supported by the picture of uh, windmills, uh, which provide a uh, partial response. Only if we take the whole package of renewable energies will we find a solution. Now, take the pie chart. We always focus on the direct energy consumption, electrical power and fuel, fossil fuels of households. But this is only about one quarter of the consumption. One eighth of the household consumption has to do with grey energy the maintenance of electric power systems, uh, boilers, etc. We forget that two-thirds of the energy consumption of individuals has to do with their energy consumption at work or during the holidays or when they travel. We cannot consider direct household energy consumption in a reductionist way. We have to consider all of the energy consumed, including the grey energy at work in the workplace. And this is why I showed the piece of meat underneath, because we have to think about the grey energy, the unseen energy. So systemic means we have to consider everything. We have the example of the acorn, the oak tree, and the jay, illustrating the passage from systemic competence to prospective competence. The acorn falls on the ground, but jay, birds, catch them and take them 300 meters away. Now, oak trees move towards northbound every 300 meters every year, and the, the uh, global warming pushes acorns northbound faster than the capacity for the jay to transfer the acorn northbound. So the biological speed is uh, faster than, the climatic speed is faster than the biological one. Here we have the objective of reducing greenhouse effect gases by 20% 20 20 by 2020 and 75% by 2050. Minus 2% of uh, greenhouse effect gases emissions before 2050. It is, it can be done. It would be four tons now, and it will go to 1 point ton, 1.8 tons per year. Except. This is based on a problem that most people don't understand. The left-hand side graph shows that a 3% increase per year will lead to the phenomenon doubling within 25 years. And what is, uh, applies uh, to the increase will also apply to the decrease. A decrease in 3% by 3% of uh, energy consumption per year will lead to uh, the doubling of the reduction of uh, greenhouse effect gases emissions in 25 years. Years, which and what works in time also works in space and it shows the second thing the positive side of things it can be done we can do something regarding the matter of uh, where do we stand today and where do we stand in 2020 in 2012 we had achieved minus 18% of energy consumption in France except that the figures are biased by that I mean that it is true if we only consider direct energy consumption, but it's linked with the fact that our GDP has decreased, has stabilized, therefore our energy consumption has decreased as well. As soon as the GDP increases again, energy consumption will flare. The figures are biased. Also, we don't... 
produce steel or textile in France. This work is done abroad in other countries, so we need to consider the energy spent elsewhere for our needs. And if we consider all the energy, our energy consumption has increased rather than decreased. So let us be careful with figures. We have to illustrate figures with the stabilized knowledge. What is this milk bottle? It's fair trade milk, but not necessarily environmental preserving milk. The milk has traveled over 300 kilometers. So yes, it's fair trade, except uh, it has a huge carbon print. And fruit coming from all places uh, at the wrong season is some Something that has a carbon, a huge carbon print. And yet, if we stop consuming them, some countries which produce them in the southern hemisphere would lose income. Let us think of changes in different terms. Changes are not seen the same way whether they are wanted or suffered, reversible or not, slow or fast. We either adjust or we break away from the whole discussion. We go into a revolution. And this is the discussion which is really in the news because there will be the COP21 summit in Paris. We have to exert our responsibilities with an ethical framework. And we don't all have the same means, the same levers for action, depending on our position, our job, our status, our geographical origin, talking about ethics. The ethics of virtues. An individual's values are important. The ethics for standards is based on the standards that we have voted, 25 milligrams of nitrates in water, for instance. And there are also things that, deontologically speaking, should not be done. And the consequentialist ethical values are, regardless of the means, what matters are the consequences. So we can't talk about one single form of ethics. We have to talk about the various forms of ethics. Let's go back to the way energy is produced in France between the 1973 and 1985. All our energy production system is reaching the end of its life. There will be a dilemma. Either we start, we rebuild our production system, we we rebuild all our power plants, except that we are paying for electrical power at production price, production cost. We have not accumulated the reserves, so we're not capable of paying for a new production system. We continue buying 63 billion euros worth of energy from abroad, and we could have injected that amount to do things differently. And in that case, we will be able to create green jobs, which were a fiction until now. We can reorient energy production towards uh, renewable energies, local energies. We change our system altogether if we do this. This would be a real energy revolution. The question regarding our responsibility lies in the fact that we need to make choices and we need to shoulder our responsibility for future generations and people living on the other end of the world. Transition and energy revolution or energy revolution and then transition, we have to decide whether we want continuity or a total break, a total revolution, except that they don't, they're not implemented the same way. The underlying values are entirely different and then that means that for teaching purposes we would also have to do things differently. De façon très différente sur le plan pédagogique. Merci.